Let's talk about cut coverage and how offenses scheme routes and concepts to beat cut coverage, in this case, for a touchdown. First things first, we have to see the game through the eyes of the quarterback, Trevor Harris. When Trevor Harris breaks the huddle and approaches the line of scrimmage, he's going to see that all the DBs are in a line on the 15-yard line. And it looks as if they're all aligned opposite their receiver, right? So that's going to be an indicator that it's going to be zero pressure. But all good quarterbacks use more than one indicator to diagnose what the defense is in. And Trevor Harris knows that it's not zero coverage because while the Sam is walked up on the edge of the line of scrimmage, the Mike and the Will are still at depth. And in this sort of defense, the front aligns tight in the gap that they're responsible for blitzing. And you just don't see that here. The reason why they do this is to force the offensive line to step down and not kick out. And stepping down is going to create a short edge for the free blitzer to get home. Trevor Harris probably knows it's a bluff. He knows that all the DBs are on the same level in order to disguise the coverage that they're in. But once the receivers get into their waggle, you can only hold your hide for so long. And the DBs are going to have to declare their zone responsibilities. In this case, cut. In cut coverage, the corner's alignment is head up to outside the number one wide receiver. All cut means is that the corners are the low defenders in this zone. The corner's responsibility is to read the vertical stem of the number two receiver. If their read, which is the number two wide receiver, runs vertical, then they're going to cover the number one wide receiver, which is what we call squeezing one. So they're going to squeeze one with outside leverage because they have an inside presence of the Sam backer. If the number two receiver runs in out, it's going to trigger the cut corner to play his responsibility, which is the flat. If both receivers run vertical, then the corner is going to be squeezing one. The only time that the corner comes off of his number one wide receiver is if the number two wide receiver runs in out. Because this is a match concept, you can get different coverages depending on the route concepts being run against it. Sometimes it may look like cover two, sometimes it may look like cover four, other times it may look like man-to-man -man coverage. But that's all based off of the route concepts that are being given to the DBs. Because offensive coordinators are so smart, they're going to try and use your rules against you. We already talked about that the cut corner comes off of his receiver when the number two wide receiver runs it out. But at what depth? Is it five yards? Is it 10 yards? Is it 12 yards? Is it 15? At what depth does the corner come off? So you'll see offensive coordinators design plays to take advantage of cut coverage at different areas of the field. All they're looking for is hesitation that lasts a fraction of a second. In that fraction of a second, touchdowns can be scored. Now, being on the defensive side of the ball, I have to be aware and be able to anticipate when cut beaters are going to come from the offense. An easy way to do that is by looking at the number two wide receiver in his waggle. If he's screaming down the field in his waggle and the number one wide receiver is kind of lagging behind him with his tempo, that's an indicator that a cut beater is happening. The offense is simply trying to get a two on one. Two defenders covering one receiver and leaving another wide receiver uncovered. We see here in this play that Ken Schaefer Baker, number 89, is screaming down the field in his waggle. He's full speed. And uh, number 15, Sean Bain, is lagging behind him in his tempo. We also see the running back A.J. Ouellette run a swing pattern out of the backfield, and that's going to influence the Sam Backer to expand with him. On defense, this is a two deep cover two defense. Two deep, double cut. You may look on the screen and see three deep defenders, but I'm going to show you how you can tell whether it's cover two or cover three. You can tell by looking at the leverage of the halfbacks. The halfbacks in both instances are aligned inside leverage of the number two wide receiver. This means that they're trying to protect the middle of the field. If you look at the free safety, the free safety is aligned just inside the number three receiver, and his responsibility is to uh, carry the number three receiver on any vertical route and rob the middle of the field from any in-breaking route from the number three receiver. Essentially, he's guarding number three, inside and vertical. This cover two defense stresses the halfbacks because it forces them to maintain the integrity of the defense. Because they have no help in the middle of the field, it challenges them to maintain the proper leverage for the duration of the play. And that job becomes harder when your cornerback is unsure or hesitant. So right here, the cornerback doesn't squeeze one and he doesn't carry the number two wide receiver, which leaves the halfback in no man's land and in a lose-lose situation. 
one way to correct this from the halfback perspective is to get more depth in your pedal, right? Getting more depth is going to allow you to see the route as it develops so you can put your body in a better position to make a play. And this is a tough play for the cornerback to make because Sean Bain initially runs a radical under. And traditionally in a cut coverage defense or a match defense, anytime a receiver from the outside position runs a radical under, you pass it off to the next defender. But Sean Bain runs that radical under and then he climbs it and carries it vertically, right? So if I'm coaching the cornerback, the only thing I'm really saying is shuffle out a little bit and then be decisive so it clears up the picture for your halfback. 